Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips, and Happy New Year to all of you again. Um, first of all, Schroeder passes on his uh, thanks for all the great fan mail that you've sent after our New Year's video. He really enjoys being part of the videos. <laughs> He's such a cute cat. I know everybody thinks that they have the cutest cat. I really do have the cutest cat. So. Anyway, um, just a few announcements. Um, for those of you who are interested in career training, some classes start next week and then some start the following week, but now is the time to start talking about it if you're thinking that you wanna start taking some of our classes pretty soon. Uh, so send me an email at pampopper at msn.com and I'll be happy to send you some information and set up a time for us to talk and, and uh, on the phone and figure out what it is you want to do and whether or not what we're offering is a good choice or if you should be looking at something else and so on, okay? Um, remember that we have several different programs, including an alternative to traditional dietetics. We've got um, programs for people who have no healthcare experience, people who have um, extensive healthcare experience and so on. So something for everybody, whatever it is that you're looking for, we can train you how to reorient yourself if you're in the healthcare professions or um, and change directions. Or if you have no training, we can also show you how to get started with a career in healthcare too. And we have some special offers, always do, at the first of the year where you can get a couple of courses for free, depending upon what you enroll in. Uh, reminder that every week I can do a phone call, Make Americans Free Again conference call, so I can teach you how to get started and organize in your state. And I'm going to have some updates for you pretty soon on our lawsuits. And then uh, Thursday night here, Make Americans Free Again gatherings, you're welcome to join us. And Tuesday night classes are back. Uh, movie nights and potlucks and cooking classes and all that sort of thing start this week. So if you live in central Ohio, come see us. We're open Monday through Saturday um, and uh, we'd love to have you come by. We have great food. We have, uh, we're great people to hang out with. Lots of good things going on here. Okay. So um, today I want to focus on an issue um, that is, it's constant. Like every hour I get an email like this. Um, some of you are having trouble making sense of the endless articles and data sets that you see um, in the media or somebody, a friend, colleague sends you something or um, one of the sheep challenges you with something and you forward them to me for analysis and we get hundreds of these, sometimes more than a thousand of them a week. And obviously we'd have to put a second story on this building and hire a whole new staff of people if we were gonna try to analyze this stuff individually, we can't do that. Um, so I'm going to provide some guidelines that would allow you to maybe do some evaluation on your own. You should learn to do this anyway. Um, and then I'm going to teach a class that I'll tell you about a little bit later. And I'm also going to cover um, a, a study that got retracted recently about your favorite topic, which is face covering. So uh, I'll cover that at the end. But anyway, I'll just start at the beginning. One of my um, basic concepts here at Wellness Forum Health is that anybody can think or make any choice that they want. We live at least for the next few days in the United States of America and choice is up to you, adults particularly. You should be able to do what they wanna do. Now, having said that, one of the ways that I've encouraged people to um, evaluate their understanding, like the validity of their choices, is to, um, if you can explain to somebody why you make the choice, have made the choice that you've made, then you probably understand what you're doing. And if you can't explain it, then you're probably just following somebody. And there's, to a certain extent, I mean, we all follow people. There are certain people who they, I like to read their articles or I like their television show and all that sort of thing. But having said that, when it comes to making a really fundamentally important choice about your health, I think you maybe want to check things out for yourself. That's always what we've taught people to do here at Wellness Forum Health. Um, Many of our, most of our long-term members feel pretty confident about their decisions. And if you ask them why they choose to have or not have a particular screening test or a vaccine or whatever, they can explain to you why. Um, maybe not in quite the scientific terms that I can, but they can tell you why they're doing what they're doing and they feel pretty convicted about it. So the key is you don't want to be in a rigid state um, where you're never open to outside information, but you also don't want to be flopping in the breeze where every time somebody shows you something, you're completely unhinged and unmoored and you can't, um, you can't figure out what to believe anymore, okay? So here are some tips. And, and we'll start with this premise here. Anybody can find something in the medical literature, a study in the medical literature to support just about any claim a person 
wants to make, just about any claim, all right? And, um, and, and that's the, the medical journals are full of garbage right now. Now, you don't wanna throw the baby out with the bathwater because the small percentage of stuff that's really good, you wanna be able to find that and look at it. But this is why you have to have rules, all right? You have to have rules of the game. And I always teach by analogy. And so uh, let me talk about football for just a minute and then we're gonna go back to rules for looking at research. All right, so in football, you have you can't just have people running up and down the field anybody can play run up and down the field and you know for an hour and then just try to figure out what happened right so you have a certain number of people on each team and and they have certain even physical characteristics i mean i'm 64 years old and weigh 119 pounds i can't play football right i, I like football but i can't play in the nfl It'd be ridiculous because of my age and my size and all that kind of thing and the quarters are 15 minutes and you the first down is 10 yards and and so you have all these rules about football and hundreds and sometimes thousands of football games are played in a season and at the end of the day because there are rules you maybe have a half a dozen or a dozen plays where you're really having a lot of debate about what happened but the rules take care of the rest and i've always said that that's the way that we should approach research all right so that's why a study doesn't make a difference. And we call it the tyranny of the single study where every time somebody puts a study in front of you, you think it's, it's everything, okay? Um, it's not. And why you have to have some grounding so that you don't, you don't flop in the breeze out there every time you see something. So anyway, some tips. The first thing is you always wanna look at conflicts of interest of the, of the authors of any study. And uh, while they are supposed to be disclosed in the actual article, the reality is that they often are not. And so I always take the time to you know, do a, an online search to see who these people are. What university are you uh, at? Uh, you know, what, who provides your funding? Uh, what are some other articles that you may have written that um, indicate that you have a bias about something, okay? So um, I think it's really important to look at the authors of the article and, and see what's going on there. And I, I had an exchange with somebody uh, last week who um, said, what do you make of this? And you know, my standard line is we don't have the time to analyze everything, but you know, here's some things to look into, which is what inspired me to make this video. I write that back like every hour, right? Um, and the person wrote back to me and said, I understand what you mean, because as soon as I started looking into these people, my gosh, are they conflicted? And I don't, want to, I don't even want to read this article anymore. And that's sometimes what you conclude. Um, another thing is correlation versus a cause and effect relationship. And this, is, this afflicts such a huge percentage of the medical literature, I can't begin to tell you. Two things can be related to one another, but one does not cause the other. And the two that I've always used um, that I took from uh, Colin Campbell, actually, these are his um, analogies, which I think are very, very um, easy to understand. Phone poles and heart disease in countries where there are more and more phone poles, you get more heart disease. So you could conclude based on that correlation, well, I guess phone poles cause heart disease. Well, they don't. And that's why you have to do detailed research to look into what's really going on. And so you probably have already figured this one out, but in countries where they're building more phone poles, there's more westernization, which brings with it a diet that leads to more heart disease, okay? Um, another one is in countries where uh, women are getting driving privileges, the breast cancer rate is going up. Well, one response to, if you're gonna look at the correlation, the proper response then would be to uh, take away the driver's licenses of all women in the United States and call those people in the Middle East and tell them to stop letting women drive. It was a bad idea all along. Well, obviously that's ridiculous, right? So what would we find? Same thing, westernization allows more women to get driver's license, which is licenses, which brings with it dietary changes, which lead to more breast cancer. So we have people jumping off the cliff. The whole vitamin D craze was based on uh, correlation without really establishing cause and effect relationships. And the whole deal fell apart of this uh, myth of vitamin D deficiency when people started looking into it differently. Um, another thing is the importance of the preponderance of evidence. And this goes, this is related to what I said about the tyranny of the single study. So what I mean by this is that um, for any subject that has been well-researched, all the studies don't point in the same direction. So for example, you can find two studies, two in the medical literature showing that dairy products, consuming dairy products helps you lose weight. 
And in both of the, in both with both of those studies, the single author of those studies is a guy who has gotten Frank Zemmel, I think is his name, millions of dollars from the dairy industry. All the other studies out there show the opposite. I could do a 45, present a 45 minute seminar on the benefits of smoking using articles from prominent medical journals. And you might start to think, gosh, I think I misunderstood this all along. But the vast majority, the preponderance of the evidence shows that smoking is harmful. Okay, so you don't wanna do it. So you have to, you cannot use single studies. And that's, what, that's what's confusing a lot of you is you listen to me report information here and then somebody says, well, here's a study that says the opposite. Well, there's all kinds of studies that say the opposite, but you have to go with the preponderance of the evidence. And that means that you have to look at more than one thing. Um, so these are just a few of the, of the rules that we use. Uh, we have about a couple dozen of them actually. And what happens is if you start applying these kinds of rules, a whole, whole swaths of what's in medical journals start to go away. People that you just know, as soon as you see their name pop up, you don't want to hear anything they have to say because they're so conflicted and so on and so on. So, um, so this way you have a lot less disagreement. I always tell people this whole thing, this whole health uh, discussion that we have, whether it's about COVID or anything else, should be about the evidence. It should not be about the person who's delivering the evidence, all right? I don't care if it's an eighth grader who happens to be really bright and has good research skills. If you're using the right rules, they take you where they take you. You don't have to have much discussion or disagreement about it, all right? Um, so with this in mind, I teach a, a long course called Research and Writing, and it's expensive because the uh, it goes on for nine months and the participants have to write um, extensive papers. I mean, most of the final assignments are you know 15 to 20 pages long and et cetera. And so a lot of people say, I can see where that would be great, but I don't want to do something that takes that amount of time and I don't want to write, you know, all those papers and all that kind of thing. So I'm going to teach a, a mini uh, boot camp kind of course on Saturday, February 6th from 2 to 4.30. And um, it's, uh, I'm just going to go through our rules. I'll show you a, a real life examples and you'll have a slide set and some written material to help you do this on your own and that kind of thing. We'll show you the shorter version of it. We have a member and a non-member price, but if you're thinking that you want to participate in this, um, again, my email address is pampopper at msn.com. So send me an email and I'd be happy to, to, to uh, send you some information back. And then um, I re referenced a study that's, that has been retracted. And a lot of you, one of the reasons I wanted to incorporate it in here is this is a study that many of you sent me and said, oh my gosh, what do you make of this? And so the title of the study was um, a Decrease in Hospitalizations for COVID-19 After Mask Mandates in 1,083 U.S. Counties, okay? So many of you were like, oh my gosh, you know, here's a study that shows that they work. And all right, so I'm just going to read the withdrawal statement and you'll see what I'm talking about. This is why you don't get all sideways about a single piece of information. Uh, the authors have withdrawn this manuscript because there are increased rates of SARS-CoV-2 cases in areas we originally analyzed in the study. So in other words, what they did was jump off the cliff and make some conclusions that they probably shouldn't have made. And further analysis showed that in areas where um, in these 1,083 83 counties where the mask wearing was going on, the cases were going up and that sort of thing. So um, I, don't, I won't spend more time on that, but it, it does kind of fit in here that you get all sideways about a single study, not all of you, but some of you. And I understand because if you're not used to doing this, you know, I used to be that way too before I knew better. So you get all sideways about a single study and then find out later on that it's been retracted. And there have been a bunch of these kinds of things since this whole debacle started. All right, so I hope it's helpful, these little tips I've given you. It's about all I can do here. I need a couple, you know, the reason I'm having this little boot camp is it takes about two and a half hours and probably most of you wouldn't watch this for two and a half hours. These are supposed to be shorter and all that stuff. Uh, but um, hopefully I've given you some um, uh, something to go on there and um, uh, in, in terms of looking at things. But the first thing is take a deep breath. Don't look at every single data piece that comes your way and think, oh my gosh, it says the opposite of what I think is true. So. I must not be you know, spot on. Well, maybe you do need to change your mind, but I guess I'm telling you how to make up your mind and then how to change your mind. It should be based on factual information and your ability to sort through that stuff, okay? All right, have a great day as usual. Pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it and learning more about all this stuff. And I'll be back to you tomorrow with more news.